There was recently a licensing issue with a gem that many Ruby on Rails applications use. It was a dependency of active storage, and this issue ultimately led to the gem being yanked. And the idea behind a gem version being yanked is that it is no longer available on rubygems.org for users to download. This could happen for a variety of reasons, whether it is a security issue, a bad release, or in this particular case, a licensing issue. And I'm not going to go into the details of this particular recent issue because it's not relevant to this episode, but it is something that many users experienced in a negative way. And that's mainly because when they went to deploy their application, they tried to start a new Ruby on Rails application or some other situation, then they found that their normal commands would not work. So I do think that it is important that whenever a gem is yanked, it does require our immediate attention, especially if we are using that gem in our code base. However, depending on the situation, and especially if there is a security issue with a gem, then we do need immediate action to ensure that our users are safe. However, regardless of any of the arguments or issues around the yanked gems, the end user consuming your application doesn't need to necessarily know about that stuff, nor should they be affected by it. And when a gem is yanked, and even if you learned that this gem was yanked, so you held off on any deployments, you could still be affected by this issue if you had a auto-provisioning production environment where based on the load, new servers would get automatically spun up. And in this particular case, those servers could have failed provisioning and your system would not have auto-scaled appropriately. And so in this episode, we're going to look at provisioning a gem in a box server. Gem in a box is a Ruby gem that will allow you to proxy and cache gems that you receive from rubygems.org. So in the event that a gem is yanked, you're still able to get access to that particular gem through your gem in a box instance. So your production environment can still deploy and be up and running for your users to consume. Another benefit is if you're developing locally and you have a local instance of gem in a box running, then you're not having to make network requests outside to download those gems, and that can be especially helpful in situations where you don't have a fast internet connection. And same for the production environment, if you have one that's close by or within the same network, then those are going to be a lot quicker to download the gems and install them. But one major benefit and downside is that the caching that goes on does not automatically remove gems that have been yanked. So in the event that there is a security issue, you still have access to that gem, and there's a potential that you may not even notice that there was a CVE or some other security issue raised about that particular gem. But on a general note, I do think that you should be reviewing your gems that you're bringing into your application, because essentially that is a sense of responsibility that you are taking on. So in this episode, we're going to look at standing up a gem in a box server, and just some of the different features and things that you can do with it. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. So be sure to check that out and use the promo code Ruby for free shipping within the United States. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.